Ooh. Burning. Okay, we lost something. <laughs> Let's get it back. How are you guys doing? All zero people here as soon as I start clicking the start stream button. I don't think I used these yet. So let's unplug not the microphone, but the extra headphones. Where do we put down? Everything's going to look like... So today, we are going to be doing a uh, Lexus IS 300. Um, this beautiful car right here. Uh, we're going to be doing 20% uh, all the way around. We're going to be doing that in our Pro Classic. And uh, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. Good morning. Um, I have to set up my GoPro. And then uh, we're going to jump into things. This is fun. This is fun thing. I'm glad I figured out how to put the little screen on the screen to make this way easier. And I don't know why I didn't think about it years ago. Just, just finished watching yesterday's stream. <laughs> well, it's a perfect time to get another three hours of window tinting. Okay, so we're gonna plug that in. This is the fun bit about my stream that I like half forget about when I get started because it's like there's like three levels to this. There's like check in. Um, and pull the car in. There is general actual work setup, so things like filling up my spray tank, cleaning up the area, making sure everything's kind of all set to actually do the job. And then there's like all the live stream prep. And then I forget about the GoPro that needs to be set up on top of it. So there's like four layers to all of this. No, this car is going to be fine. This version is really not that bad. It's when you get into the like the next gen or whatever where they put the speakers back in the one. No. This isn't the one with the corner speaker, so we got we got lucky on this one. So, it's still like lower on the front end, but pretty straightforward on on that front. Hanging out with my three-month-old son. Oh, enjoy it. <laughs> Three more hours. Let's go. Now I know. Uh, now I know. Baby ages way more because ours just turned one in November, and now is like bobbling all over the place, and and we just took away the baby gate. So he's kind of like roaming into the kitchen a little bit, following us around. It's really cute. Three months, I don't know if he was even necessarily rolling over at that point, but starting to like, <laughs> or no, he was probably giving us funny looks all the time. Like, who the heck are these people? Why are they here? Okay, so let's turn this on. you gonna do for us today oh look at that that is what we want to see that all looks good nice heck yeah I love it when that all just works so we're gonna turn on the mic we're gonna plug in that battery and then we can get started at least it's not a Mustang. Did you ever think you'd say, at least it's not a Mustang? I would have the same opinion about it as I do before. I still do. I had a fluke day. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a tighter back window that you always got to be careful about, but I swear I've never had as hard of a time on one of those stupid convertibles as that one. So the only, best I can say is slightly closer than it used to be because, I, I, yeah, you put them in, you get them cut right, they're okay. It's just getting that just perfect. Still annoyed about that one. <laughs> just 
just like, it shouldn't have been that. It shouldn't have been that at all. All right. Well, we're going to get started here. Um, he's waiting up front. So let's, uh, let's keep things moving along. Then we can hang out after the fact. And, you know, you never know when things are going to go absolutely sideways. And, uh, and then we lose all that time that we had in the beginning. So we're starting, we're starting at a really good time. It's a 10 o'clock appointment starting after 20 minutes. Got some coffee. I got here like 20 minutes early and so did he though. So if we have all that going, no windshield on this one. Some people do. Some people, I mean, we definitely do plenty of windshields and it's kind of funny, like there's some people that just, I don't think they really realize that we do windshields because it was, I had that question. It was like, oh, you do windshields? Huh. So too soon, maybe later. You should try wrapping cars. I have no interest. GoPro. Not really. So I've messed around with like some vinyl wrapping and stuff like that. It's like, I already wear a lot of hats and headsets. So it's, it's just like adding, adding to it all. It's an entirely different skill that I can't really f put a good amount of appreciation into. And then I have to try and grow a vinyl graphics business on top of it. I'm just, I'm not there. I don't want to do it. If I did, I would need to feed somebody else to do it. So I'd have somebody else like do the, the, the vinyl wrap and then we just bring it in as an extra service. But I just don't get a lot of inquiries for it. And I watched my, uh, interestingly enough, I watched my dad shop with it. They, they put a pretty big effort into vinyl wrapping and it's been tough for them to grow it. It hasn't just like picked up. So what's crazy is uh, supply chains on vinyl wrapping too. So people just are having a real hard time even getting material. And that would scare me. Do you sell pre-cut? I don't. Um, maybe later on. But again, it's, it's one of those things that it's not that bad if it's real straightforward as far as like car and shade and whatever. So like if you need patterns for like a 2010 Malibu, it's like, okay, that's fine. But if you need patterns for like a truck and then there's like, that's the year the model changed. And then there's like five variations on that truck. It gets a little bit nightmarish trying to collect all that info in the right way and get it out right the first time. Um, I mean, I was doing it for a little while, but there's so many places that you can order kits from. If you want geo kits, you can go to Tint Zoom and they sell, they sell tint kits. I need to hire somebody. And I think that's probably where I'm gonna be at here soon enough. I just need to hire an extra set of hands and then maybe I'll start taking on some extra interesting things that, that I could kind of scale up, but takes too much effort for one person like me to do because of all the extra stuff that I have. That would be kind of funny. I don't know why I'm nervous to hand cut window tinting than I am vinyl wrapping or PPF. What's crazy is like the way that that all gets cut. So I know what you mean, especially with, uh, with PPF. So with, with paint protection film, you're literally scoring, like unless you're wrapping it around the edges, there's a lot of places where you're gonna be scoring the PPF and you like basically drag your blade till you hear it scream. 
and it's just like and then you know you have a nice cut and then it should like tear away without having gone through to the paint <laughs> yeah I remember learning that and there were so many like little cuts and touch-ups can get overwhelming too Because I've done, I've done, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think, probably like 20, 20 to 25 front end paint protection film jobs. And it was always, f <laughs> there were some that got sketchy, especially in the beginning. Because, like, you don't necessarily know if you've cut through the paint protection film all the way, especially in hard-to-cut areas where you need to trim it a little bit. And then it was also one of the things where, like, you know, while you're learning window tint, there's no, like, super good roadmap for it. Like, there's classes that are worth going out to take and stuff like that, and I would highly suggest doing something like that. But you're kind of like figuring it out. <laughs> so it's all about like feel. Oh, this has it too. This has the PPF little inserts right here. Collect lots of dirt on the edges and stuff like that. So it'll look great in the beginning and then gotta brush that out every once in a while. I finally made, made a live stream. Welcome. I often catch other live streams that I wanted to see like an hour after they happened. And I'm always sad about that. I'm like, oh, I would have, I had time. Why didn't I know about it? Um, the classes are worth it. Just getting that part that's lingering. Yeah. But yeah, the classes for that are definitely worth it. I didn't have an opportunity to take the class or take a class before. I was kind of just like, here's PPF, get started. Um, we had a, uh, we did have a rep come out and he was actually a PPF installer himself. He was a window tint PPF installer. He was great. Super helpful with all of that. Is it uncommon to tint the moonroof? The moonroof. Um, it, it is here, but it's not that I wouldn't, would think it's weird or anything. It's just already factory tinted. And most people, like, I mean, you have the shade. So I think most people just kind of forget about even tinting it. But I always make it a point to, like, specify that it's all the sides in the back because I'm always paranoid for that one where I say, like, complete tint even though I've been saying that for years. And then they're like, what about the sunroof? You said everything but the windshield and I have a sunroof that you didn't tint. Then it'd be like, ah, oh, you got me. Oh, I should probably put this down. I should probably put that down. We gotta go one more. One more. No radio. Oh, well that's annoying. Alrighty. There we go. Make sure it rolls up nice and straight. Do you have to go below the window seal? Uh, yeah. It's debatable. You don't absolutely have to, but I would always recommend you do. I mean, I've seen plenty of tints stick fine, especially long term with just going right above the seal. The thing is, in most cases, you're going to see some type of a gap because 
like here, right? They're matched up. So if you go above the seal, you're just looking at bare glass right there. And that's all going to light up uh, out in the daylight, right? So there's going to be a big difference there. So you want to most times. If they went down much farther, like a Ford, that's where it's, it's a real gray area. I still recommend doing it, but you know, if you fall a little bit short, no harm, no foul on that one. You'll be, you'll be totally fine. You wouldn't see anything. And, uh, and it, it'll stick. There's always a chance that the seal will share it off. But, you know, Sirius XM stickers are a thing. And they're not tucked into the seals. And they hold on just fine. So it wouldn't be the end of the world. And if you have a window peel, you just redo it. What's been happening? Oh, that's been happening. Yeah, and like there's too many. Like if you hit the bell, that should help out with notifications. And that genuinely seems to help on all the channels that I want them to help on. Um, but sometimes I like I always get sidetracked about even doing it. But if you want to make sure you get a notification, try hitting the bell. Hit that bell. Any suggestions on the new F-150s? Do you have to go below the window seals? It's pretty deep. Oh, oh, oh. If you're asking about the f 150 specifically, no. No, you really don't. They, they are really deep. They're kind of funny to tuck. Um, you can do it, but you don't have to go below them. Fords, Fords are... are in most cases, like the, the Focus, the Fusion, um, the Explorer, those are some of the, like the Edge is kind of an outlier where, where they're a little bit tighter and I would, but most of the other ones, Ford's like pretty generous with their seals there. You'll be fine without doing it. But if you ever ask if they get tucked here, then the answer is absolutely all the time, 100%. Right? Right, we've never gone shallow. <laughs> the plotter, I'd, I'd actually like to use it on these rear quarters and see how they work, because they're not the most fun to hand cut. There's those like tighter gasket style ones. So while it like it'll just take me extra time to hand cut them out. So I'll definitely fire up the plotter and see what we got. It's usually been pretty good with this type of stuff. So I'm relatively confident. It's a 17 IS 300. So it's not stupid old or anything oddly unique. So if I can't get this, then uh, I don't know. We've got some problems then. This deck is a little interesting. This one, this is one of those decks where like, I don't know what it is with automakers and doing this, but a lot of them do it. It's like, I feel like if you're gonna put glass anywhere, you should be able to at least see through it and clean it, like be have the ability to see through it and clean it. So I understand with like the brake light, but then when they get to these edges, they like slant them rather than just bring the whole thing a little bit lower. And then you can't get a towel back here. So like if you're the owner, that's the biggest problem, right? There's like a slight air gap here, but if you're the owner, how are you supposed to clean that? You just have little bugs building up in the bottom of your window. Will you own it? Lexus. It's poor design, Lexus. And I'm sure they have some engineer that'll tell me otherwise, but that's fine. I'll stay in my ignorant tinter mind. Whoa, what was that sound? Oh, it's supposed to be super windy today. It's like 60 degrees outside. It's amazing. This is that time of year where any 
slight warmth that you get back, you're like, oh, it's better now. So it's going to go from like, like it was like 50s yesterday, 60 today, and then it's supposed to go to like 20 to 30 because anytime it gets warm in the winter, that means a cold front is just going to blow through. And it's blowing pretty good here in Ann Arbor. Oh, you're out in Ann Arbor. Nice. I know where that is. I've heard of that. Okay, so we're gonna use 20. Oh yeah, we gotta, we gotta cover this back window too. Um, so let me grab a, I always forget. I've been using dryer sheets here for a minute and I swear, I never remember it until I'm gonna throw it on. I gotta clean this box out. My dry shrink prep is somewhere, and so it skips my mind. I'm just gonna throw it back on here. Ooh, I know what I should do too. I should put another battery on the charger. So I have one on my head, and then I should take one of the proven batteries, and I should put that on here. That way I have something else charging. Oh, this one's already charged. Dang. Okay, so this one's good. We'll start charging multiple batteries. I have to get, like, a different one. So this is the battery that goes, like, on the back of my headset. Um, and it's like a, they say it's a 29 milliamp hour battery, 2900. Um, they get bigger and basically they just get fatter. So I don't want to really increase the battery size. I guess I just have to try a couple of different ones and find ones that actually last. But they've been dying lately. I've had the main ones for, for a little over a year, so I figured I'd just replace them, but I was looking for something better. Do you reuse the same dryer sheets? Yeah, you can reuse them for a little while. Basically, till they stop their effectiveness. Um, it's usually like three or four cars. Any more than that, and you really start to notice that there's just like not much schmutz left. So dryer sheets, a box of that will last a really long time. So get the better ones too. There's actually a difference. So if you just go buy like generic ones, um, most of the time, they haven't really worked out very well. So I was like, you know, I was using Tide or Bounce and and they were good. And then we got, we picked up like, to save a couple of pennies, we picked up uh, some Meyer ones. It's basically like Walmart. And maybe they're better now, but like even the Costco ones weren't super great. So Snuggles, Bounce, those are all good. For dryer sheets anyway. But yeah, they, they last forever. <laughs> Still waiting on a customer that was supposed to be here at nine. Did he answer the phone? That's uh, that's one that at this point, bud, I'm a, I'm a write off. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was my problem at like a lot of shops. And if I'm on, like, I, I'd go back and forth. When I, if you know you're at like a busy place, like this is just like if you're tending somewhere that's that's generally busier and you go in and your nine o'clock appointment doesn't show up, man, I'm smiling. It's nine o'clock. I'm tired. I just got my coffee. Give me a good hour to just like kick back and not do anything. It's annoying that I got there and I have to wait around, but I'm also just like, yeah, whatever. There's other stuff coming in. I'm good. But if it's like, 
the other side of it is like, hey, dude, I'm trying to run a business, so <laughs> depends on your situation. Probably annoying, I'm guessing. Deposits. That fixed all of that crap. And not everybody, not everybody wants to leave one. Um, more often than not, it's just like, it's because they were shopping around. And some people will just tell me point blank. They're just like, yeah, I'm just kind of shopping around. And it's like, oh, okay, well, you're not, you're not my, my customer then. And I don't, I don't tell them that right off the bat. I'm nice about it. But, like, in my head, that's what I'm saying because, like, I, I kind of know. I'm not the cheapest. I'm not going to be the quickest in and out. And I'm, I'm really not going to be the most convenient. But you're going to have a damn good job at the end of it. And that's what I'm good at. That's my specialty. All right. Fun part about this one is trying to get into here past the mirror. But I'll tell you, there's probably, on average, more of a crowd, like the majority of calls, I should say, that you're going to get in the beginning are all people that just, they want to get in really quickly, and they want that, that cheaper price, like convenience and cheaper, right? Like, who doesn't want that? But especially when you're new, you're gonna get that a lot more and it'll be confusing. So if you wanna accommodate that, like there's lots of shops that that's the way that they do and they're doing great because that's just, that's their clientele. But understanding that ahead of time um, is helpful. Because we'd all love people to do even a half an hour worth of research before they call somewhere, but like that's just most people are most people just kind of shopping around are pretty impulsive people, so they will just like, yeah, I'm looking for window tent. How much is it? Okay, thank you. Bye. Or they'll say like yes, and you'll be like, okay, great, and you'll rate them in the schedule, but there's no actual commitment. It it didn't cost them anything to say yes. They're just like, and maybe they didn't even. Maybe they did it because they didn't want you to feel bad. And so, like, that's a thing, too. Not exactly just doing it to be rude, but, like, you know, they hear the price, and they don't want to, like, ah, oh, shoot, it's just out of my price range, but I don't want to pretend that, or, you know, I don't want to just come out and say, hey, it's too expensive, so I'm just going to say yes, 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 yes. Get marked in your appointment book, and then you'll never hear from me again. So there's a lot of that. Your blade will be dull now. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be duller. Usually can get a nice point, but we rode the whole thing off the top edge, so you'll see. The ends are still usually completely fine. After you snap them off, you kind of get a new one, but yeah, blade as a whole. That's why we change it a lot. Snap and change them. The way it slants on the front edge made it a little awkward. And then I noticed the window kind of shifted a little bit. So I pushed it back forward and recut it. 
just so it'll line up nice and nice and centered. So it might not look like it, but we can, yeah. Shifts a little bit. So like push it up, it's out here, roll it down, and then it like falls back. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's subtle. Enjoy slower time of year. I try to. There's parts of it that definitely like can freak you out. I mean, especially if you're like, you're doing well enough. And then all of a sudden it's just like you have like a couple weeks of just like hardly anything. You're like, what the hell happened? <laughs> I like it. I think that's a great way to handle it, too. 40 years of doing this, learn from you, deposit when I get that vibe. Cust uh, customer works great. I like, I like the way that that's done, too. So you don't necessarily need to do it on everybody. But yeah, those ones that you're just like, mm, I'm going to need a deposit, dude. <laughs> and then if they do, you're like, oh, OK, cool, sweet then you don't have to worry about it. Like, it's just it's done with. But I'm at a point right now um, where people are still so new, unless they've actually been here before. Um, that it's... I, I, I've... Like, had those situations where, oh, yeah, it's going to be early tomorrow and it's, it's late at night right now. Or, um, yeah, it's going to be, like, later in the afternoon today. Yeah, that's fine. Just come on in. And then they don't, they're the ones that, that don't show up. And I'm like, deposits. Super annoying. See? We change it. As soon as I feel the blade start getting dull, for me it's it's all about feel. Like you know it's gonna get dulled out after a top edge, but it gets its use, and then we change it. When, for me, it's just whenever it feels like it's dragging, that's a problem. We don't want that. snap it on the floor. And then sweep it outside into the parking lot. These ones, like, they curve. Whenever you see this, they curve a little bit more at the top. Not a bad idea to flatten that all out before you cut it. Also, I like to, like, so this is straight, and then when you get up here, it kind of curves out here. 
So if you cut all the way up here and then just follow this and the window rolls down to here, there's like a little, unless you, you gotta tuck it a little bit farther this way, you might have a little gap here um, when the window starts to roll down because it'll, it'll just jut out too far. So I'll start somewhere like here because this is the straight side of it and then it starts curving up. And then on the glass board, I'll just go straight up from here because there's definitely glass there. I should try these blades over on the on the civic hatch window. I like these. I like these a lot. Ultra fine. They just cut where you're telling them to cut. There's no like bunch up or anything. So when you want to get that little sliver off, they do a good job of that. Are you still doing classes? <laughs> no, I haven't. What's your favorite squeegee and why? Um, it changes, but right now it's the hybrid. It's been that way for a while. So it's this guy right here. So there's an orange side and a blue side. Um, in my opinion, they're both so similar, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's just a really solid material. You can flip it around, you can use both sides. Um, it's just, it's a really, really nice feeling squeegee blade. Is it easier to cut? both windows. Oh, is it easier to cut both windows at once? Um, it's faster, really. So you take some time and practice. It'll become easier, but it's to save some time. It's one of the, like, it's one of the major things that you can do to speed up your overall time on a car. It's definitely worth doing. I went from working um, at my dad's shop to doing mobile. So we would primarily use like the plotter with tint tech there. And it was all about high production work. It was just, you know, we'd have anywhere from um, like eight to 10 cars in a day. And that's not necessarily full cars, but there could easily be days where that would be like 10 to 15 cars. Front doors, full cars, windshields. It was just like, just get a bunch of work done every day. And then I went, uh, signed up with a mobile company and I didn't have a plotter to, to kick back on. It was back to the old hand cutting days. And I was like, yeah, no problem. I know how to hand cut. And then my first car took like two and a half hours. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? So I hadn't, I like used to double cut, but not much. And then I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to start doing that now. Saved a bunch of time that way. These ones are more curved. They don't look like it, but see how this finger is still here? We're gonna come back to that in a sec. I just started, should I double cut? No, you need to just learn how to cut. Um, double cutting is just like cutting. There's just two pieces of film there, so it's just thicker and it kind of feels weird. So just, Learn how to do it one piece at a time, and then you're gonna add a second layer later on to help save some time. 
when you're learning, it's not about speed. It's about just making sure the job's done right. But speed's always in the back of your mind. So you just kind of pick up from there. And then when you start getting more comfortable, uh, it'll still take you a while, but you start getting more comfortable. Then you'll almost want to set up like a stopwatch and then just like improve your time. So that being said, it's, it's still, it's not ever about just speed. It's about like maintaining a flow with like quality. So a good goal for most people, most businesses to shoot for is like two hours without a windshield. Or th three, two and a half to like three with a full windshield. Then you have room inside of like an eight hour day, realistically for like three and a half cars. And you got some wiggle room, in, like yeah, four if everything's perfect, right? But you have like a little bit of wiggle room there and you shouldn't stress yourself out too much on that. So that's like an individual making a decent, like a pretty decent income for themselves. And then what's nice is like, okay, so let's say you, you do two. Well, you're still making money, so that's nice. Like, and depending on what your overhead expenses and what you charge, like, shoot, even one car a day for a lot of people is, uh, is more than they make hourly. Especially when you can do it inside of a handful of hours. Is 400 a fair price for my Ranger? Um, you, at least around here, you'd be in the in like an upper tier of film, so it's kind of, like pricing is always tough to say. Like, it's fair based on the quality uh, and film that you're getting out of it, really. So film is part of it, and the business that you're going to is another one. So like, I'd start a truck like that here at like 260, and carbon would be like 320 without a windshield. But again, I think I'm undercharging in some areas right now. So like. 400, like with tint, it's hard to say because area matters and establishment matters a lot too. So it's, it's not really, like that price would kind of tell me that they're probably a good shop that uses a good film. And from there it's like, okay, now I'm paying enough for them to put out good work. So it's really about getting a clean job. <laughs> One car a day would be a dream. Ken Glass super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Like to get you a cup of coffee. Aw, thank you. I will use that. Thank you so much, Ken. I will use that, and I will get a mocha. I used to always get something different and then ever I don't know I tried the mocha and I'm like I really like this so a good Starbucks mocha is kind of my go-to right now good stuff um it was funny one car a day would be my uh would be my dream <laughs> it's being able to do it and then also being able to bring in the work to do it So what's holding you back from doing one car a day? Even if you set aside like the entire day to do it, generally speaking, if you know some of the ins and outs, like my first car after I've been practicing or training for a while was like six hours completely on my own. That was like a pain in the ass Taurus or something. But I got it. 
I wasted film and stuff, but I got it. So what's keeping you? I'll buy you a mocha next year when I visit. <laughs> nice. We had somebody in the area, dude. It was so cool. We actually tinted his car too. He was like watching the stream, and he's like, "I can get you a coffee." And then sure enough, he like actually ran out, and got a coffee, and then we tinted his car later on. I gave him like a free windshield trip for that. One weekend of tinning matches, one week of my payroll job. It's pretty great. I find my part-time payroll job this summer instead of full-time so I can spend more time tinning. That's good. That's a great way to do it. Offsetting time. It's, I've, I, I'm not one of those people just to take a full jump into most things. I figure out how to make some time for it. And then if you can get it to this sweet spot where all of a sudden it's like pulling in half the income and just like paying for its time, then it just kind of like, you can, you can start funneling more time to it and the next thing you know, that's your full-time gig. That's how I do a lot of things. So I always have that like, home base home base safety net I'll bring it from Australia <laughs> they probably wouldn't let you take it on the plane in all fairness too <laughs> sorry liquids over what three ounces no good Um, I want to do temp, but I'm worried I'll need a license or to be certified. No, neither of those things. So if you want to have a business, you'll you usually like, okay, so there's two ways to do this. You can just do it. And then if your city came around and noticed some, eventually, which it would take them a while to even notice, I'm sure. Then they're gonna be like, hey, you gotta have something for this. And then you just get that. <laughs> so that's all well and good. Don't, um, oh yeah, this is too old at this point. Um, don't, don't worry so much about that. So certification, there is no tent certification. There's classes that you can go to and they'll give you like a certificate, but that's a certificate saying that you took their class. Nobody cares. Like no customer, their marketing is, is bad. No customer outside of a particular film group, basically. Like, so if I'm shopping around and I find a film brand, and then they refer me over to ones that are certified with their products. That's different, but that is so minuscule compared to what, what the reality is. The reality is people are just calling around looking for work, taking referrals, and just wanting to get it done. They don't, they don't look into your business history or anything. So it's like, as a business, um, there's certain like, city or state requirements or federal requirements too um, for just like owning a business. So you want to like kind of keep that in mind, but don't let it just sway you from just getting started. So I am, I'm a LLC and that was as simple as going on like a legal zoom site, filling out some, some info, paying a fee. And then they're like, congratulations, you're a business now. <laughs> Like, there's, there's not much to it. But I started 
I started the Detroit Tin Studio thing before I did that, so. It's just, there's so much like red tape that can sway you away from stuff. And it's like, you'll, you'll kick yourself for not starting eventually. When you really see how easy it is to get started, it's usually a mental game. It's just talking yourself into getting started. I was the same. So like, I've been tinning for a number of years and I was still nervous about starting my own thing. And I, I basically knew how the whole business works. I've seen it firsthand for years. At least a, a wide variety of variations. So, so I was like planning and planning and planning. And then um, my wife was like, okay, so when are you gonna get started? <laughs> and then I just like, oh shoot. <sighs> all right, what do I need to do? Instead of like looking long term out, like I should do this and I should do that and I want to have a pretty website. And it's like, okay, what do I have to do to get started tomorrow? Daniel Raina super chatted $9.99. Good morning for me and Dean Pretrasivic. <laughs> How you doing? Thank you so much for the 10, man. I appreciate that, as always. From you and Dean. Thank you, sir. Don't legal, don't legal Zoom try to sell you stuff? Yeah, doesn't everything try and sell you stuff? I can't super chat. Oh, really? It's not working for you? You probably said something that I missed. <laughs> no worries. It's just good to have you guys hanging out. Like every, every well-optimized business is gonna have 500 things that they're gonna try and sell you on the road to checkout. So, just say no to all of it. It's the things that you need, right? There's like the charge for filing and there's like little convenience packages like actually having somebody uh, to review paperwork with you or something if you have questions. Like there's just tears to all of it. So just, if you don't want it, just say no to it. They'll let you know what's important and what's, what's not as important and it's just all these things, they cost some general amount of money. It's a business. So a lot of times just assume that business thingies can cost double or triple. <laughs> double or triple like stupid things. Oh, it's so annoying. Oh dang, virtual coffee is on the way. Super duper. Super, what is that from? Dean Petrozevic super chatted $5.96. All good, I worked it out. Here's a virtual coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Dean for the eight Australian, I much appreciate that too. From, that's gonna be from Dean and Daniel now. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, like, with all these things, they all try and sell you stuff. It's just, that's just part of a business, so. I think there's, there's like ways that you can file all this on your own, but like, it's a con convenience. Convenience and, and making sure everything's just done right. That's, I'll pay, I'll always pay for that. If there's something that I'm like, okay, it's gonna take me this long to learn it, or I really don't know, or that is not my skill set. Like, I, I can read paperwork. 
three times over and still not understand what it says. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for a service like that. I think in total it was like six hundred bucks. DC Customs donut. and Detailing Super Shatted $2. Here's for your donut. That's amazing. Okay, so you guys definitely covered, covered coffee in a, in, in a donut. Probably more than that. I remember when we were talking about, like, gas being more expensive and everybody's like, here's for a tank of gas. <laughs> I just need to, what, we need to bring up, like, practical everyday things? Here's for that. <laughs> It's hilarious. Ooh. That's right, just like chat said. So for heat guns, um, they, they, in my opinion, they can never get hot enough. That goes with every single heat gun that I've ever used. The, but distance is your temperature control. So when you want it to, to cook, you just put that heat closer, and then you want it to also fan out and warm up a broader range, so you pull the heat gun back. So that's why temperature control with, with tint doesn't matter. Just any heat gun, turn that sucker up all the way, all the time, and, uh, and you'll be good. <laughs> okay, now that one. That one is like a whole cup of cream for the whole cup of Daniel coffee. Daniel Rayner super shatted $4.99. <laughs> Here for some cream for the coffee. <laughs> you know, I'm going to use that and I'm going to I'm going to buy more creamers for up front. They cost like five bucks for another pack of like 25 of them or something. I have, um, I have regular, I have vanilla, and I have the hazelnut. You know, they, they do not put much into making mocha creamer available. Meyer's got like these little dinky ones. And either that or it's powder. David Weimer uh, super chatted two dollars. Some coffee for a coffee and Mirite main. And Mirite main. Daniel Rain super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Oh, some sugar, you. <laughs> See, I'm gonna be efficient with that money too because. I do the like the flavored creamers, so they have sugar in them too. So I'll just get more flavored creamers. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Both of you, David with the two, um, and Daniel Reyna uh, with another five. I, I appreciate both of those. Emma, mine. It's so funny how it says it. It actually does a good job of pronouncing it. Have you tried tint slime? I have. Um, overall, it was pretty good. The Ultra was my favorite, but I, I go back to Baby Shampoo and Dawn, so. What time did you start this Lexus? I just tuned in. Um, 10.30? think 
I don't know, however long it says we've been streaming for, but then we jumped in a little bit after. 10.30, 10.40, something like that. Um, Fusion all type. Yes, I've tried it. Uh, Fusion all type is okay. I like Tint Slime Ultra better at the time. But it's been a while since I've used all type. Um, all type, like ultra seem like tin slime ultra seemed more like baby shampoo. Like it, it just, it was like a cleaner version of baby shampoo, and it tacked down a little bit better. Um, but with these films, it just sticks really aggressively. So that's why again, like soap was a big problem. So I haven't tried it in a while, but all types seem more like Dawn. They had like a laundry smell to it. <laughs> Ken Glass super chatted $1.99. Here is extra donut for the baby. Aww. He doesn't like sweets. <laughs> Ken with a two. I appreciate that, though. That's funny. We give him, like, sweet things, and he'll make a face most of the time. He likes vegetables more than he likes, uh, more than he likes sweet things. I think he's slowly coming around to other foods and stuff. Like, he likes fruits, though. But when we, like, gave him, when we got, like, a cake for his birthday or chocolate or like any of that he always would just make a face and like spit it out right away like oh this is too sweet dude what's your ratio so in a three gallon tank which has about two and a half gallons worth of water in it and about a half gallon worth of air I do about three ounces of baby shampoo and an ounce of Dawn. So, I kind of overdo the soap, but things move really nice that way overall. It'll still tack up quick too. Like, with some of the other films, this would be sliding around for like a day when you use that much soap. But look, watch. We're already tacking up. So we get it in place as quick as we can. We line that sucker up. And I always like to basically have a floating pattern until I want to tack it down. But what usually happens is like you're leaving it sitting there and then it starts to tack down on its own just with some quick time. So like within a matter of like 15 seconds, it's going to be hard to move. Some, some windows will shift a little bit easier and some will tack down a little bit quicker. But when you start tacking down the top, it's pretty much locks it in place. And if it doesn't, um, after like two or three, then you might want to lighten up the soap a little bit, but that's up to you. If you're having fun with it, then by all means, keep doing it. You're really not gonna hurt, hurt anything by having a little bit more soap. A little less soap is one of those things that makes it more difficult to uh, get into place. So I'd rather have too much than too little. Then like, I swear, like Japanese and Korean cars, they always, their glass always slides a little better too. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for just a second. Kila is the best. Black Magic is close second. Yep. Ironically, that's what Forbes said. <laughs> Pretty much. They were like Moto Shield and Lexan. And I was like, oh, okay. Amazon links? Yep. Looks about right then. What card do you use for shrink? Um, so I use these. Felt card. They're uh, 
just softer felt cards versus a hard card. We talked about them a little bit more yesterday, but they skip over stuff on the back window. You can also get Mac tacks. Mac tacks are are really nice too. They're like the OG felt cards. What do you think about Expel? Um, I think they're a really solid company, and they do right by the people that are in their uh, in their little little circle there. So, if you have an opportunity to use them, I think you'll probably be pretty happy. But they are like all Expel, so they're they're going for more uniform like franchise style looks across the board. So if you're an Expel dealer, like you're in Expel and you're not using other people's products. So you could kind of sneak that for a period of time or whatever, but, and maybe they have like certain graces with companies, you know, using like their tent, but they really want you as a paint protection film place too. So like, they'll be a little lenient for a period of time until somebody else comes in and then they're like, look dude, it's either the, this company or you. What do you want to do? So they have a history now of yoinking some software and stuff away from people. And that, that always is sad to hear, especially when they're like, yeah, sure. And then you get comfortable with it. And then they're like, sorry. <laughs> so I'm not like super fond of, of that part of it. But they're a good, good overall company to, to have in your portfolio. What a political answer. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it very political? Maybe it depends on how the job's going. If I was upset, I'd be like, man, I'm so friggin' tired of their exclusivity. They suck. Maybe that's on a worse day. But right now things are moving along really nicely, so. Ask me again when we mess something up. <laughs> oh, you're not gonna find them from, uh, from AutoZone. So an alternative to the blue triage, there's just nothing you can find locally that's gonna come anywhere near it. You actually have to order some stuff um, off, the, uh, off some tool sites. Sun Distributing, Tint Depot. Um, I put recommendation links in the chat for you so you can see all the tools that I use and stuff. But I kind of like goofed on the uh, the AutoZone kit because they really have. God, where is that? It's sitting around here somewhere. These. Yeah, you can't find these or fusion squeegees or any of that locally. They have some crappy rubber squeegees, and uh, and then it's like stuff like this. They have a really chintzy white blade version of this in one of the kits. This is about as good of a local squeegee as you're gonna find, but they have a really bad version of it. And that's in the Black Magic kit. No, that's in the Gila kit. Black Magic just has that one black squeegee. So it's legitimately difficult to just go tint your windows and find something Ooh, I ordered the tint through your site. Can you ship it FedEx versus UPS? I can see about putting a change in, unless it's already got a tracking number. Um, it gets drop shipped through Geo directly, so let me see if there's something I can do afterwards. They both have problems, but yeah, if you if you work at FedEx, so you you know how it's gonna go. It's totally fine. <laughs>
It's like coming down hard outside, I think. That's awesome. And then it's gonna freeze over. Not so awesome. It was so nice. I walked outside with like my jacket and a hat and it's like like 55 to 60 and I'm like, oh, it's summertime again. Just for today or part of today. Just get that like nice warmer weather feel. <laughs> warmer weather in the 50s and 60s. So how warm is it really? Tornado, high winds, and rain from Kentucky. Well, screw you, Kentucky. Why you gotta send that shit over here? We don't want it. We'll send it back. We'll send it back FedEx. <laughs> or UPS, which one? <laughs> FedEx lost my Pixel 6P. So FedEx, like a lot of my film typically comes FedEx, but I think UPS is the stronger carrier around here that like seems to treat stuff a little better. Um, but they all both seem to be okay, except my plotter. They really irritated with me with my plotter. They lost my plotter for like a month and then it magically showed up and like a side of the box was missing. And I'm just like, like it's just the scale of it. I understand losing small boxes, but there's just something about losing like a 50, 53 inch plotter box that is just like, that's the outside looking in though. I'm sure there's more to it than that. <laughs> that's probably why they lost it, because it's, it's so big. Another shipping department. <laughs> See, that too, I don't know about other FedEx facilities, but mine has a whole operation for stealing cell phones and other stuff. Yeah, dude. I, I, cause why not? Just the inner, inner FedEx crime ring slash UPS, they all do it. They all do it on some level. Like something new comes out. Oh, it got lost. And then the company's gonna replace it and then file a claim, right? And then it's just like, there's too many things going on and it's a small package, it's like, shoop. I appreciate you putting on the plastic. A lot of people spray without it. I used to do that and it's totally fine, but yeah, it is one of those extra things. So that's why I do it now too. So I'm glad you appreciate it. Delivery guys are sick. You paid nothing for that. Well, they get paid whatever they get paid. And then, yeah, that's why they stole it, because it's... <laughs> it's just good business. I mean, bad business, but good business, in a way. Smart business? Does smart business have to be good business? Paying. I, I couldn't tell you what you're actually getting. I mean, I'd hope you get what you pay for. 2020 CHR or something like that. They probably have a budget for stolen stuff. Oh yeah, just like the printer question we had yesterday. They factor all this, like three, Three three percent of it's gonna be stolen. 
Um, people don't really know. So in my country, people don't really know about Windows 10, but I'm getting 2020 THR, 10 with Expel window film, I'm paying 200 for the whole thing. Any idea what I'm actually getting? Um, well, you'd hope it'd be Expel, but I, I have no idea otherwise. There's a lot of counterfeit boxes and stuff too. So the thing is, there isn't a great way of just knowing the film that you're getting without trusting the shop that's doing it. So counterfeit boxes are a big thing and they actually try and scam a lot of people in my group. Like, so we have lots of Chinese sellers that'll just be like Expel or Lumar or blah, blah, blah. And they'll show you like a bunch of like legitimate boxes. But the thing about film sources is if it's not coming, if they're not getting it direct from the company, then it's not real. But there's only so much the actual companies can do. Because I saw an example of solar effects uh, getting completely ripped. They shared it too. They're like, they're like, it's a weird, I, I don't remember exactly what they said, but they made a post, like the, the owner, one of the owners of solar effects. Um, shared a post. It was like a, uh, it was like a international SEMA type event. And then there's a whole uh, like Chinese solar effects booth set up. And they're just like, we have nothing to do with this. <laughs> like this is really weird or upsetting, but like there's nothing that they can really do about it. It's just, that's how it happens. So trying to pursue some type of like legal way of, uh, it's just expensive and dumb. So it happens with like boxes and stuff because you, you get all the film rolls. They like they look the same at face value. Like they all look dark. And if you hadn't used it before, would you really know? So it's like it's one of those those perfect FedEx rings there, where you have film in a box, and it's harder to counterfeit a phone, right? Because there's technology built into that. There's component pricing. And you know if you got the real deal or not. But with film, it's, it's entirely different. Get those bait and switch boxes. Or there's shops that'll promise carbon or ceramic and then they'll install whatever film that they have. Like, it's just, it's a, as they say, it's a shady business. Like who knows what, what Shady Dave is putting on that car. <laughs> so, but that'll only go on for so long. You know, if you're not putting, like if you're cheaping out on your film, it'll come back. It'll come back and it'll, it'll be whatever color that it is. So that'll bite you harder than paying up front for a halfway decent film. Or, and the thing is, if, if the f nicer film that you're installing comes back even, which it does, it can, um, you have company support behind it. it that's what the warranty is. You're, they're not just telling you to keep a warranty There we go. You just adds a little piece to them on every install. I do actually, I just shave off like a little bit and I set it somewhere and then it grows back. Oh, that sounds creepy. I just put a little piece somewhere. Ew. <laughs> we need more coffee. <laughs> um. Poor working conditions and long hours since it's peak season. They're making us work 12 hours a day. Ooh. The de delivery drivers don't steal as much as the warehouse workers because they make a lot more. <laughs> wow. 12 hour days is no fun. That's for dang sure. But yeah, it's busy season for all you shipping dudes.
Oh, is that Shady Dave's? <laughs> we gotta stop calling out of business. <laughs> We're gonna catch wind of it and be like, why are people dogging on me, yo? Okay, we're gonna close this. Stop the ding ding. What do you think about NASA film? I've never heard of NASA film. I've wanted Oakley to come out with a film. I mean, how, how d are there no sunglass brands that like, how come none of them have a window film brand, right? Like, if I could install, like, Ray-Ban window film on your car, would it be extra special? No. Probably not. But it's Ray-Ban, dude. They have a big presence. Same thing with Oakley. Maybe because they make more on selling you a pair of sunglasses than they would on a roll of film. So it's like smaller and simpler. That's probably it. I probably answered the question. It just doesn't make sense. Who's gonna want, see, there's pros and cons to all of this from both sides. So a film company just has to ship you a box of film. Um, but that being said, there's a lot of logistics involved in getting that film and shipping it out to you. And it's a big item. So stocking, cutting, storing, Shipping, it's all big and expensive. Sunglasses are small. Lots of them fit in a box. And so if you can sell one for like 300 bucks, make good margins on it, ship it out in a smaller package, like everything's just easier, right? So. But that being said, it would be really nice to see one of those companies get ambitious and be like, yeah, we're going to do a window film. Then I might leave Geo might leave, or add. Maybe we'll just add. We'll add our Oakley, Oakley film. Maybe I should send them an email. CEO at oakley.com. <laughs> Yo, Mr. CEO. I am a YouTube channel. I think you should have film. Oh, now it works. <laughs> versatility super chatted $9.99. It cents. works for versatility. Been a while, so I should pay my respects. Ha ha. How is that floating computer desk? Does it stay pretty still slash is it roomy enough? Ooh, get them to use Geo as the film. There's there's the forehead play right there. Thank you so much for the super versatility. Um, sorry, just making sure this is lined up. I'm sad the fog machines didn't work for everybody else, and then it's just like, oh, hey, remember me? It works. We'll give a good blast at the end. Anyways, um, what was that? Been a while, so I should pay my respects. Thank you. How is the floating computer deck? So does it stay still? Is it roomy? Um, I have mixed feelings about it. So it's cool, uh, but it's not very, like, it, and it's adjustable. But it's like one of those, like, it, it's a low profile thing. So I originally got it for the home garage because the floor was a little slanted, had that little garage step. And wall mounting something just made the most sense. So I just took that, brought it over here, threw it up in the corner. And um, I like it overall because I'd still be getting like some type of little desk set up and maybe I'd have a standing corner thingy and prop it up and um, I, I don't know entirely, but overall it's okay. Um, the, uh, we're gonna let that tack off for a sec. The, uh, I wish there was a little bit more space in between like the keyboard setup and the monitors, but I mostly do that so it stays underneath the camera. 
So I can lift these up and reposition them, and I often can like move these around a little bit and maneuver them and stuff. So it's pretty cool. I like it, but it does kind of like wiggle and blah blah blah. But it looks clean against the wall. If I can clean up my cables a little bit more. <laughs> oh, I like it. How many people would just say Geo is just reboxed Oakley? Or Oakley is just reboxed Geo, right? But that doesn't matter. Ah, oh, I'd be so strong. It's that is brand recognition right there. And that is what most film companies don't have is uh, everyday brand recognition. So if somebody is just at the counter and they're picking between films. And we, we, we all talk about materials. We talk about carbon, dyed, ceramic. But if you could talk about dyed, carbon, ceramic, and Oakley, it's like, oh, well shit, what's that got? Oh, it's Oakley. Dang, I gotta get that Oakley tint on my car. That Oakley limo tint. And then crash my car with that Oakley limo tint. Oakley black, like ah, the, the titles and thumbnails would be great. And then maybe they'll eventually come out with some, some chameleon iridescent films. Maybe I should just change my titles until I get a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. Dang. Sad. Because <laughs> part of me wants to do that, but I can't do that. I would commit a war crime for Oakley Boo film. Yo, dude, it's just Geo. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the auto world would uh would go pretty nuts there. Especially like, come on, you get a Tesla and then you put like Oakley film or something on it, that'd be great. Um where's my cannon? Why did I miss like Two phone calls. I wonder if they're trying to get in today. I should probably turn this on. Is there a big price difference? Um, there is definitely a price difference. Apex is is more expensive. Um, if you want to check out their pricing, tint stuff. I gotta change that. MyTintStuff.com. You can create a login. And you can check it out there. They can advertise their prism technology in the film. If they actually do something, like if they added um, like polarization or something like that, the prism polarized lenses, yeah, like something like that, that'd be super cool. GoPro. I mean, I just think, I'm, I'm sure somebody there has like thought of it, right? Or at least I would imagine. But maybe they just, it's just not like they're, it's not their jam. I'm gonna shift this over just a little bit. Okay. No, the way the reason to come into it is just dollars. But that would be like I think their name enough. Like maybe they would see later down like actually bringing some differentiate. Asian to like a higher film, but man, I honestly think they could just be like, yo dude, we're Oakley. Do you want Oakley film? And then they give all the dealers the ability to sell sunglasses too. And then discounts on those sunglasses, like come on. Um, okay, so. Uh, 
Oh. Frozen. Canon. They could rebox. They could rebox anything. That's that's what Expel did. Not with Gila, but like that was their whole approach, right? Like, and that's been we've seen this time and time again with a lot of companies. It's been cool. You take a company that has a more exclusive, higher end presence, and then they work their way into more broad, more affordable things. And window film just made sense. So global, like it's not global, but it is global, but it's not global. Um, very good film name and reputation, and they put be better branding on it. So for a lot of these companies, it's just like it's a no-brainer. But it is like a significant like, it, it's way different. It's way different than selling plastic glasses. When you can make stupid margins on something that's this big versus a roll that's this big. Yeah. There's just a big difference there. Okay, we got to bring up film cut. Oh, yeah, we got to fix our camera, too. There. Now it works. Um, let me, I'm going to check a year real quick. So I know this, but it's a, uh, it's an IS. We got to pull up the desktop. Tinning in the winter? Um, you're, you're totally fine just as long as you do it indoors. Uh, it'll take longer for the film to dry out, but it will dry out. Still, just try and squeegee everything as best you can. Know that somebody might hit you back up for like water in between the film and the glass for longer than you might expect. Um, let them know that up front. Like, is it just gonna take longer? And then everything should be fine. Anything past a certain time though, like, if they're hitting you back up like two weeks and they still got water in between their film and the glass, I'd redo some of those windows and just press out more and let it sit for a little bit. Most things dry pretty efficiently though. Um, so this is going to be a Lexus IS. Um, they don't even care. It's just IS 2314 four door sedan. Nice, that's good. So make sure that this looks basically correct, which I think it does. So we'll do a back window here. How many quarters can we, can we cut out? Ooh, we can cut out a bunch. We'll do that, 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 that. Ooh, can we get one more? Do we need this many quarters? No, but hey. Extra chances, right? Unless they just don't line up. I gotta clean up my table, too. Sweet. Oh, let me make a little more space, because then I'm just wasting space here. Yeah, dude. We are going to then click cut. And we'll go back to the GoPro. And then it's gonna do its thing here. So, I'll sometimes just leave this rolled up here while it's cutting. So this is going to do its little, like, cut on pole jam. And I like to have a handle on the end just in case. Oh, you son of a bitch. Ooh, it's close. I guess it's going to do that one more time. Ooh, it's so close. Yeah, this thing is like majorly off tracking. There we go. Let's get that end and then roll it up. So that way I have just an easy way to pick it up off the plotter. You don't have to baby that much, but sometimes this got cut, caught in the catch basket. 
So once this last one is <laughs> it is just hanging on by a smidge. Oh, I can't even believe. <gasps> Stop. Oh, you son of a bitch. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hang on. Oh, it lost it right at the end. I thought it was smarter than that. I think we might be okay, but we'll check it over. We lost one of the quarters, that's for sure. So, this machine has been off tracking for a little while now. And I guess I gotta figure out how to fix it. Because it wasn't a problem and now it's becoming, becoming more and more of a problem. So we're gonna flip it this way because I don't care about the quarter so much. Not on a big piece like this. You're better off pulling the entire thing before you start to cut. Yeah, I don't want to have to. But I think it made a dumb, it also made a dumb choice at the end. It was like, did the full roll, and then it was doing these one by one, and then it just decided to like, go all the way out and do a completely random one. just in my opinion, out of order. Maybe it was the way that I placed them in order or something. I don't know, but it was dumb. So you can see from <laughs> here all the way through. Oh, it just ruined all my quarter windows, just completely. I forgot I, what button I could push for stop. <laughs> so these are all junk now. And as long as there's no creases in this one, I at least have a back window. So we'll have to we'll have to actually cut out quarter windows again. What a bummer. There's no designated stop button, but I forgot that you can press one of the buttons. Uh, there's one button in particular, and then the whole thing will will stop. So that's that's remembering janky plotter. We mostly wanted this for the quarter windows and like the back glass was the bonus. So now I'm kind of bumming. Just drying that off. Had it happen with the workhorse too. The workhorse too? Or the workhorse too. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. It's the type of plotter. Um, I'm gonna have to see about what I can do to adjust it. Roland or GraphTech won't do that. Yeah, those are usually really solid machines. They also cost way more, so. <laughs> they'll 100% do that. Um, well, if they're all set up right, they'll roll perfectly straight. If your roll is telescope, that's where you'll see some of that. They're not just gonna like off track like that. This is one of those like the roll is, it's just, it keeps pushing it this way. And I don't know, I, I've messed around with the roller adjustments on the back a little bit. I don't know. It's also goofy because they say, well, it's not great for a 36 inch roll. And I'm looking at it going, what now? Tinting is 36 inch rolls. So what I want to know is, is this going to line up? So I'm all the way over there. I think it's going to line up. We put glass aid and stuff on this already. I should just 
we're getting him one of those little those little things. I gotta just I gotta get, kick back to just doing back glasses the way I normally do them for a little while. Just ignore the plotter for a minute. Do that. Cut out some quarter windows on a 24 inch roll. Because I would absolutely have clicked to oversize this just a little bit because I have the ability to uh, move this around on the inside a bit. But leaving it to like, eh, we'll see how it does. It's like I'm getting tired of it. So now I gotta set up the rollers for like a 24. Or maybe I can use the 36 and just stagger more of them and then we'll be fine. Ding, 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 ding. <sighs> Cannon. Hello, Tin Studio. How can I help you? Okay, yeah, like a visor up front on the windshield. Okay. Um, so really it's going to be about keeping a little bit lighter, but for the windshield strips we do like a 5% because it's really the only thing that's kind of effective. But anyways, the, uh, the, as far as pricing goes, it would start at 150 for the both. So a hundred for the front doors and 50 for the strip. I don't, unfortunately, I could get you in earlier next week, but I'm all booked up this weekend. Mm-hmm. I hear ya. Um, it's a little hard to get in um, early afternoon calling on a Saturday. Saturdays always book up a lot more than most days. Mm-hmm. Some place might still be able to get you in. I just, it's unfortunately not here today. Um, Grand Rapids, I, unfortunately I don't know that far out. Sorry about that. All right. Alrighty. Well, you have a good one, okay? All right, bye. Aw, he sounded like he would have been okay, though. <laughs> He's looking to get a set of doors and, uh, and a windshield strip done. Windshield strip done, but it's like calling last minute on a Saturday. It's a little tough.
What's up with the scammers in the group? Oh, I don't know. Dude, it comes in all forms. I'm doing what I can to block it all. Um, but there are lots of scammers for any number of, of things. And so Facebook gives us decent tools, but what they're doing is they're kind of learning what, what restrictions there are on most groups. And then they're just spamming lots of them with like the slowly evolving titles and stuff like that. So like they had like a 10 character limit and then they, they fi figured out that, oh, if I do 11, then it's fine. See, the problem is like either we turn on post approvals or we turn on, um, we turn on other approvals, which is a real big bummer for a group because any barriers deter people and you just want to kind of leave it open and most of it's going to sort itself out. So that's why you have like moderators and stuff. So it's just, yeah, it's a huge bummer to see stuff like that pop up, but it'll, uh, it'll usually get sorted out in time. Yeah, block, delete, and then if you want to report them, then go ahead and do that. Um, but definitely just immediate delete and then um, there's like a little thing that you can check to delete all their posts and all their comments. So in case any of them have like spammed comments along with it and just like give them a, give them a swift boot. Yeah, it's super annoying. But on the plus side, it stays really tame and it has grown um, a lot. So the group has jumped, um, like it's always going up, but there's like, to give you guys some context, the group has grown by like 800 to 900 people this week. And it stays on track anywhere from like 500 to like 900 in a week. So there's new people joining every second. So we definitely needed some moderators finally. Lots and lots of activity, comments, questions. And it's a really good group. It's got a really good temperament. It's nice. People are generally respectful. And if they're not, we kick them out. Like the guy that was just like, F you for deleting all my comments. <laughs> I don't even know if we blocked him. I thought it was kind of funny. We had this one guy. Um, so there's uh, new features that are coming out for the groups here and there. So they, they understand. Super chat. Oh, dang. That's a heavy question. Mimes 11 super chatted $4.99. Owning your own business, how do you Jim. decide how much to pay yourself and how Jim. much to leave in business? Jim, 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 Jim 11. <laughs> Thank you for the five. How do you decide how much to pay yourself? I, I'll be honest, I don't have a good answer for you on that at all. Um, we just kind of shoot money over as it's needed. Um, one thing is you want to try to wrap as much in, you, in your business as you can as far as expenses go, just to keep your taxes lower. But you are going to have to pay like 30% like tax, so ways to try and wiggle that 30% down is always nice. Um, so you wanna pay yourself kind of what you need, tie the rest up in your business, and then use whatever that for your business. I mean, we all want 
some sort of a comfortable living and whatever you're willing to pay as far as uh, life expenses and taxes and all that goes, talk to a CPA and they'll help you far more than me. Thank you for the five. I wish I had a better answer for you, but it's really a, there's a, there's a lot to it. So I don't have, I don't have a super good answer because everybody is going to be different. I just kind of shoot money over when uh, we need bills paid and I try and leave a lot of it alone in the business. Um, and then, you know, obviously use the stuff for the business. And then there's a lot of money goes to buying extra like products for the store. Um, so not only this shop here, um, but all the extra little things like, uh, like custom squeegees and stuff like that. Glass aid, clay bars. I should do this one more time. But thank you for the five. What was that one? Yeah, we did leave that post the other day. I don't know if the guy is blocked, though. He might have gotten blocked, but I know the post was up there. I just thought it was funny. It's a good way, like, there's no good way for me to announce it. So, it's indirectly a good way to catch people's attention on, like, if there's a problem with the group. So, some of those things is just kind of like, eh, should I delete it? Probably. But also, it's like a little announcement about... You know, if you've had problems with your comments getting deleted, um, we're not censoring the group. We're not censoring the group. It's just like Facebook is adding features and then they, <laughs> they had this thing to automatically delete um, the most common reported words and stuff. And it turns out that is just like way overkill. And I didn't even know it was enabled. So then I find out like I'm seeing all these comments that were deleted, looking them over. I'm like, oh, this is just like, there's not even anything bad said here. How are these getting deleted? The brake light comes out, pushes to the left. Oh, it's one of those ones, okay. I appreciate that. It's a little late now. Maybe if we have to redo it. There's enough space there. I think the sides are a little tighter, but... Are we good? Ooh, I think we're pretty good. Let's hop outside and take a look-see right quick before we get too far. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, the group is, uh, the group is much better from what it was a handful of months ago as far as keeping spam down. And now we have, like, comment comment filters too so like what what a lot of spammers would do is they wouldn't even post they just direct reply to a bunch of people and then they advertise like cash app or something like get 750 through cash app by going to this link and doing this and then inevitably somebody tries to do it and gets scammed so we had no way of blocking any of that. It was just deleted as you find it. And it was always buried in replies. It was super obnoxious. But now we have a way of preventing it outright. So all the other stuff, unfortunately it's gotten pretty bad with some of them, but it's usually only for a limited time. They deleted my comment for having the word screw in it. That's really obnoxious. See, I... Like, so what? What if you're like in a light bulb group? And you're like, I screwed in a light bulb. 
And then they just delete it. <laughs> like, that's where auto-deleting the most reported things is pretty obnoxious. Um, when it's that, I like, I thought, when I, one, I didn't know it was enabled. And two, when I saw it, I'm like, really? These are some of the most reported things? So how PC does this group actually have to be? Super dumb. So I just disabled it. And then we can add certain things. I want, I kind of wanted to go in reverse, but the way that it's set up now is totally fine because one thing they'll do is they'll link websites. And I was thinking that we could have like a whitelist of websites, but it's also okay, I think the way it is. We'll just catch them as they come in. If there's any websites that we don't, that are like one of those spammy websites, then we can block it now. That's how we stop the significant amount of like cash app spam. Okay. Getting stuck. There we go. There's like one pocket. Oh yeah, it's right there. Damn it. So close. Um, okay, we're gonna grab something else. We're gonna grab the Green screen tool, this guy. So bulldozers are great for lower corners, but getting yourself out of a tight corner is annoying. So the shortcut or one of these should do the job just fine. Sweep out that air bubble and then it doesn't get stuck when you're trying to remove it. But I still go straight towards the bulldozer first because it does a more even job. And then those little things can be touched up with something after. So we got this, and we almost had some corners. Chroma key, yeah. Yeah, I shut it off. I think it's a little obnoxious, but I think there would be a really fun way to implement it if I get around to it. Maybe we can do like a super chat chroma key thing. But when I'm adding too many things, <laughs> it becomes a lot. So like too many technical things behind the scenes that can, that can mess up. It just becomes, starts impacting everything else. But that was fun to do. Because I, I think there'd be a way that like if you super chat, because we have the fog machines which, which can be inconsistent too. But if we do a like a temporary chroma key, I think that'd be a lot of fun. So you just time it right on some of the tools that I'm using and then they'll go wild and then they'll settle back down like the floor will light up or something. That would be fun. Super chat for two minutes of chroma key. <laughs> Time limit, I have no idea. A minute. No, then people do the whole thing. You give them too much power. I was gonna say like a minute per dollar, but then I was thinking about it and, and Daniel Reyna will light up the stream for the whole time. <laughs> How much do you charge for ceramic to do Tesla backlash and front windshield? What about the sides? That's kind of a, an interesting quote there. So I typically charge, God, see these are, ah, oh, they get so hard to quote when you take out all the sides. So let me know if you need the sides or just the back and the windshield. You'd make a lot of money. <laughs> It's not worth it. I don't want things to completely detract from, from what we're doing here. So I've, I'm, I, like, the purpose is tinting, and if there's so many lights and colors and crazy things happening and you can't even tell what's going on anymore, then it's just like the people that are trying to learn, like it, it takes away from it. So 
with uh, with any of that, um, like a handful of seconds for for chroma key, I think would be a happy medium there. It'd be fun, but I don't think it'd detract. <sighs> I would let you up for dollar as well. <laughs> Um, what do we got to do? One more thing. Um, so we got the back glass. It actually worked out great. I was a little nervous on the, the pattern size, but everything fit exactly where it needed to go. It's a little bit tight, but everything's covered. So they could have gone slightly wider, but it looks good. So I'm very happy with that. So all we got left are the, uh, the quarter windows. So I'm going to dig out a, we're going to fix this up. I'm going to do like a 24, I think. Yes. So normally the roll would go on this side, but because it's a 24, and this is team for 26 and 34, we're going to have to go all the way over here. Move this roller back, put it on the edge, put that on the edge, lock it in place, move that over, doot, doot, doot. enter. <sighs> so we need <laughs> we need to get rid of all of this. And then we're going to do a 362-inch roll. So we're going to cut a couple quarters out of this. And, uh, and we'll see how this goes. I got a roll of, OK, so we click that, click this. Got a roll of Max Pro. It's rolled liner in. Oh, like Lumar? That is weird. I don't think the rest of their film was rolled that way, so that's weird that that stuff would be. Probably, probably sourced from somewhere else. It's not green, is it? When I was looking at their films, a lot of them were green. Hopefully we didn't screw up our cut. Geo is liner out. It's 1%. <laughs> Wait. Only one of the... What? It's... Oh, it's one of the percentages that you have is rolled backwards from all the rest of them. So I'm not going to definitively say anything. But what I can tell you is if you're ordering film and if film is coming one way and then another roll comes a different way, then it's likely sourced from a completely different place, and it is just kind of like they just like, yeah, let's, let's get some from here, get some from there, and there you go. You got a whole lineup of film. It's a little bit sketchy. I always clown on the name a little bit too, because what is Max Pro? Like Max Maximum Professional? Um, is there a way I can directly message you so I'm not typing paragraphs in your comment section? Honestly, typing paragraphs in the comment section is, is going to get something answered versus not. Ceramic Pro is making me mad with liner in. That's interesting, too. I've never used their film. Um, liner in, that's, a, that's definitely interesting. So the only ones that you'll really see that from is like Lumar. Lumar was pretty notorious for that. But if you mostly cut things on a plotter, you'll really appreciate that. Um, otherwise, if you're running around 
um, you're not going to like that so much. It kind of sucks. Because that roll is going to like skip around in the box a little bit, so you got to leave it on the rollers. I hope this is the right way. Yay, it is. So if that roll is skipping around in a box, um, it's going to wear scratches into it while you're in transit. While you're in transit, what even is that? I don't have a potter. It curls into itself when I'm stalling. Whoa, wait. So when you peel the liner, it like likes to like tube up while you're installing it. It doesn't just lay flat. Okay, so even Lumar was rolled that way, and Lumar didn't do that. If if a roll was over rolled or there was something, I don't want to say wrong, but like there's more tension put on it, or that's just like, it was just a curly ass roll of film. That's just what it did. A good film shouldn't do that. It's just, I'd hate to work with something like that. I would switch immediately. You shouldn't have to compensate for that stuff. That is one of the most aggravating things that a roll of film can do. I've used films um, like, it's a good example, like ASWF, um, where it was doing that. Here, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. This was the old, old little gator tip I got here. So I was hanging out. Um, but there's, there's certain things that film shouldn't do and having films that curl in on themselves is like an extra layer that makes tinning impossible. It's so frustrating. I think I would have, I think I may have had like Lumar do it before, but like it would be a bad roll and then we get it swapped out or something and it wouldn't do it again. So it, it, yeah, it's, it sucks. No good, no good at all. You don't want curly ass film. You don't want it to roll off the glass. You just, even if, sometimes they'll lay flat and then you'll pull the liner and then they'll curl. That, that might be more frustrating because <laughs> you forget it. Just order Geo. <laughs> Yeah, it just gets, gets you into something, even if you don't want to use it long term, just get yourself into something that's a little bit more, will keep you a little bit more sane. <laughs> God, God, man. I just, I need to try more films, but I just, I just assume too much from them because I'm not going to just like without trying them anymore or whatever like I, I should I'm still gonna want to try them first but I talk pretty positively about the brand and everything and I still think that they have a hell of a brand but like if the film's doing that like they need to fix that real quick ah cannon nine hundred in film down the drain Ooh, okay, I would still use it and install it and then, and then switch it after that. Wow. Or see if they'll take it back. It's not down the drain. It is a little bit. <laughs> well, like, it's just, man. That's a film that I would have I ha I would have high hopes for. I hear my garage door shaking right now. It's super windy. Do you guys like this tint with shirt? It's like the Friends logo. I never saw that show, but I'm waiting for this to connect back, and then once it does, we should be good. I'm 
No video. Why is there no video? Ugh, just when it comes back. Are you kidding me? I bought four rolls of Max Pro ceramic. I'm okay with how it is, just not gonna be my main ceramic film. It's got that delay on it. I just did a recording, so now I gotta wait for it to come back. Did you guys see Casey Neistat actually posted a video? Like two videos? I was so happy to see that. God, his videos are so good. He just does such a nice job on everything. He always does. He's always interesting to watch. It was a total commercial for like a, a film course thing, but man, he always makes it interesting. He's back in his New York set. I saw a commercial on Facebook. I saw the thumbnail on YouTube and I thought it was an old vlog, so I didn't click on it. And then I saw something on YouTube or something on Facebook, and I was really surprised. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then I saw like another one pop up, and I was like, holy shit, that's actually a video. So he's got two videos out right now. And then it's a crummy commercial. No, I'm not upset about that. <laughs> it just was surprising. I was like, oh my God. But dude, the work that that guy does into every simple scene is so intense. So much extra work. Like, he'll walk from here to there, and there'll be like six shots. And he keeps a coherent, interesting talk through like the entirety of anything. He likes, ah, oh God, I want to just watch that video. Someone added relax to the flag work, and I'd love them. <laughs> Isn't that weird that f relax would be actually a good flag word? Oh, did I move the heat gun over there? I'm dumb. Relax. Yeah, because there was like, yep, I know the post that they're talking about too. That's so funny. Oh, did you guys see, um, I don't know if you guys watch Ludwig at all. Definitely, it's a, it's a streamer. Um, but I was so happy because he's like a big streamer that just got signed with YouTube. And he's been, he's been stream blocked four times since he joined or something like that. And it was what we experienced the other day, like watching other videos. And then if the wrong music pops up, it'll deactivate your stream for a little bit. So there was, there was like a big, it made like some news. It was great. So like we saw it, we had it happen the other day. And then all of a sudden it happened to like a big creator that just signed on. And so it's like, oh, there's no favoritism. <laughs> it just can happen. But they, it's, it's not a big deal for a channel like that either. Because if I was his channel, you might be like, oh, God, I just signed up here. And now my whole channel has been flagged. But his channel is doing great. So no worries. We can be a React Andy channel. We should have a little time to hang out afterwards. I'm not like prepared anything, but I should be able to. Oh, come on. Just, just a little bit. Don't get stuck. There we go. It'll pick like one spot and then want to bind up. 
that's the worst about these things. And then you gotta like shift the whole thing around. So these could take a couple of tries. The other side went really good. This side, we'll see. Mm, a little iffy. Maybe we can just squeegee it out. <laughs> I wanna be the very best. Like no one ever was. Do you wanna catch all the films? I'm gonna add TV. Yeah, it, whatever words, whatever words you think that are, are becoming popular, um, and then we we kind of just will manually review them. That's totally fine. Because I would I, I'd add stuff like dumb, stupid, um, and there'd people that would say like, oh, I don't know if this is dumb, a dumb question, or there's somebody that would go like, don't be dumb. So context matters for all of it. Da -da -da. Do you know the pokey rap? We were watching Pokemon episodes on Netflix not too long ago, which Pokemon Journeys was surprisingly good. <laughs> but it is Pokemon. But anyways, the uh, we were watching some other ones, and the Pokey rap was popping up, and I'm like half remember it and half reciting it. I'm like, oh god, I remember way more of this than I thought I do. It's great. Dang. These uh, these quarters, man, they lined up real nice. I like that. What is the Spanish Inquisition? Offhand, I couldn't say. I recognize, like I've heard of it, I just don't remember what it is. So I'm no help there. I'd Google it two seconds. <laughs> Yay, he's turned out way good. Very happy about that. Back window, quarter windows, they're, they're solid. That's why we got it. Monty Python's Flying Circus. Oh, I've seen like a handful of those. The main one. What was the main one? Uh, my the Holy Grail. I think that's like the main that that is the main one that a lot of people will quote. That's some some proper cheese moments. Alligator window tint super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Do you ever have a problem with those new Lexus back windows and the film not wanting to new stick Lexus as well back due windows? to the coating they use? Um, I'm gonna be hundred percent. I have not had a new Lexus coating yet. I see a lot of other vehicle types, um, but I just don't. Lexus is one of those brands where I just don't get a lot of in general. So, unfortunately, I can't comment on that. But, I don't know. It's a weird coating, man. I've, hear, I've heard different 
things about it. Like, you can scrape it off if you really want to, but... Ugh. Some of that, that kind of stuff is getting funny, and it's leaking over into other different types of films. Uh, or other different types of cars, isn't it? Like, other different types of Toyotas. So, might just be a hazard brand at some point. <laughs> They added it on Lexus, then they added it on, like, some of the Camrys, and then they added it on, like, some other stuff. I just haven't seen it yet. There we go. A lot of moisture that needs to dry out there. I was, I've had it more on the LS, but I was trying to help out the community with some things that you've had at work. Oh, well, if you know, let us know. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I don't know enough about it, honestly. I've just seen what I've seen in the groups and I'm always on the lookout for it, but. Hey, oh, it's working now. Thank you for the uh Kevin Rogers. Thank you for the five though. Twenty dollars. Sup, Matt. More to the tech fund. Sweet patterns, my guy. Glad I got to catch the stream. At least the end, lol. <laughs> More to the tech fund. Sweet patterns, my guy. Glad to catch the stream. Thank you, sir. I much appreciate that. Sorry you couldn't be here for more more of it, but thank you for the twenty. People were adding to a coffee fund earlier. <laughs> They're like, here's for a cup of coffee. And then creamer. And then sugar. <laughs> I usually will lightly wet sand with 1500 grit, but be careful you don't mar the glass. What is that? What are you wet sanding? Like, with that coating? Or am I just crazy? Okay, so we got some last little touch-ups here. But overall... Buy another coffee. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've gotten like, I have a Keurig up front. I've gotten extra creamers, um, so I'll put it to that fund. We need to add a little bit more to it. And let's wipe this down. I'm really happy with this. It's turned out nice. Everything went really straightforward. The only thing that clowned us was that plotter for a minute. <sighs> we gotta fix those rollers. It was working better before, and now it's just, it's off tracking a lot. <clears throat> Especially when you only have half a roll that you can, that you can have under those rollers. Just gets obnoxious. Get a window tint super chat four dollars and ninety nine cents. I'll wetland any back window I think I might have to worry about. Oh. But like I said lightly, back windows are expensive on the cars I work on. Gator, thank you again for the five. Wet sand, wetland. You know, that's an unintentional Freudian slip there because you're out in swamp land. <laughs> <laughs> Wet sand any back window, I think that might have to worry about. Lightly, back windows are expensive. Like, on any of them. Yeah, like if you're scratching any back windows, man. All it takes is 
all it takes is one back window to cost you the entire job. So yeah, for sure. Um, something that I really haven't gotten into. I'll have to, I, I was saying this on the last stream. I have to remind myself to pick up some sandpaper just for like squeegee blades, just to see. Cause that always gets recommended to me and I just haven't really done it. And then we'll give a good walk around on this car. Oh, we gotta put the headrest back in too, don't we? So let's pull this stuff out. <laughs> David Wyman super chatted two dollars. Fog machine, potato, a mirite main. <laughs> uh, there's such a stark difference between super chats sometimes. That's what I love about streaming, man. You gotta have that, like, <sighs> you gotta have that, that every once in a while. Potato, am I right, man? Am I right, man? You are right. The uh, Porsche I did this morning was over 200 grand. Well, yeah. Good God, guys. Thank Cozy you. 78 Rios Super and 99 cents. What's up? Mm. How everyone one doing on thus winter? My nephews want to learn to do tinting. We watching you right now. Thank you. Cannon. Jose with the 20, thank you. Uh, we're doing good. It's a little windy right now and uh, storms coming in. We had, we went from like 20 degrees to like 50 to 60 and then Michigan was like, nope. So cold front blows through, freezes us back down. My nephews wanna learn how to do tinting. We're watching you right now. I appreciate that a lot. This is a good place to do that. Thank you, sir. Tin tools are nowhere close enough expensive to sand them. I'd like to try everything now at this point, or at least most things. When you get so many people, um, when you get so many people recommending something, like I have that vice over there to like trim off an edge. I like that. Um, but sandpaper, I just want to see what kind of finish that you get. People will recommend doing that. Um, or <sighs> sandpaper or, oh, yeah, yeah, like the triages and stuff like that, too. But triage doesn't recommend doing it. So I just want to play around with it. I would said not to do it on back windows either, but <laughs> here we are. So we'll get it, and we'll, we'll cover our bases with a couple of things. All right, we're going to shout out some supers. See, I have a chair here, and I'm still standing because it's weird to sit down and take a minute. He's waiting up front. So, oh, you know what? I'm going to hang up. Hang up. I'm going to hang on for a second, and we're going to leave this running. Um, I'm going to deliver this car uh, right over there, and uh, so I'm just going gonna, gonna to get that situated, and then we'll hang out for a minute. So, I'll be right back. In the meantime, I suppose you guys can talk to yourselves if you really want to. There, lightly. You can Rick hear made your... a good point. Most of the tools have a scratch coat that if you sand or shave, they lose that coating. Right over there. Tools, tools have a scratch coat? Do they? Really? That's the first I'm hearing about it. Again, yeah, mine, right over there. Um, so yeah, let me do that. I gotta throw tape over the switches too, so. Hello everyone. Potato. Do we do the key? This is the point where Matt put the key somewhere and forgot. Get Rick in here for a little LOL. Oh, you know 
know what. Sandpaper, so, you never know how much you this remove. Tape, this tape's been fine, but I also have door hangers I can show you guys. Sanding or sharpening he said it removes that scratch coating if they get bad just get new ones but just try to keep them clean. I would recommend getting Gotta new ones take anyways. Them switches. But, you know, just in case. So these um, were dropped off by Sun Distributing too. These are their do not roll down mirror hangers. And you can get these in a variety of different ways. But they have some generic ones. So if you don't, if you just want to get a pack of something, you don't want to go like full custom and stuff. Like a brand new they have easy these, so scratch I thought that was a nice little one thing. And one they also have a little spot in the bottom and it's really good at uh, picking to put up a business card LOL. in there, like little cutouts. So you can put your business card in there and make it more personal, unless you want to just go full on and get your own. So it says do not roll down until, what is it, 12, 11, so we're going to just say 12, 16. 12, 16, 21, or maybe 22 or 23, you know. So that's all that. Just got some nice care info, like for best results, always use cleaner specifically formulated for automotive tint and microfiber. Uh, spray tint safe glass cleaner on a window, blah, blah, blah. Just some care instructions, and then it's also got some things on the back that's just helpful. So like drying time, black dotted edges, seat belt chips, nighttime defrogger distortion. So yeah, it's good stuff. I like it. We're gonna throw this on. Two-piece tint meter is like 10 tenths you can do windshields lol. Okay. And uh, da, da, da. what else do we got to do? And yeah, I'm going to get this typed up. I have a Mac in to do all that tint squeegee floor squeegee epoxy squeegee. And back windows. Hello. Como esta. Hi. Estoy bien y tú. So you'll notice some distortion um, in the film right now. So no habla español. So it's going to take at least five days. Ramones de fiesta. Coming into some cold weather, so it'll take a little bit longer to dry. But I put some tape over the switches, so you're going to leave your windows rolled up for the next uh, 
Rolling on the floor laughing rolling on the floor laughing rolling on the floor laughing. Hi customer. I like your car. Shushing face. While it's curing for the next like five days or so, it, I put tape over the switches as a reminder. But if you were to accidentally, accidentally roll them down too, lying face. Um, everything should be totally fine. And if something peels, it's under warranty anyway, so it just peels when it's done. Um, Shushing face. You don't like his car. IFO. Do. Quick. Somebody super chat. I'm broke. You're lying. There was nothing else. Um, at the time, nobody else was doing prank videos. So, yeah, I gotta jump on it. And, like, I'm in college. But I, I've been trying to figure out a whole YouTube thing for like a very long time. So it was until a lot more recently that we, we have more like programs of like live streaming and bringing cars in. And doing Super like chat, four like US dollars and 99 cents, beaming face with smiling eyes. <laughs> Super chat. Five US dollars, just because. Kevin Cassiano super chatted five dollars, just because. Oh god, it's about to kick off. LMAO. Jose 78 Rios super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Smiley face. Super chat, four U.S. dollars and ninety-nine cents. Grinning why face guys, with smiling eyes. Why are you guys trying to gas us, huh? Grinning face with smiling eyes. Grinning face with you smiling guys. eyes. Can't can't have anything nice, can we? Jose seventy-eight Rios super chatted four dollars and ninety-nine cents. Rolling on the floor laughing, rolling, rolling on the floor laughing, smiley rolling face. on the floor laughing. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. I'm gonna take away your ability to talk here too. All you all. Super chat, five U.S. dollars. <laughs> Good God, we're just going ham now. All right, uh, so yeah, uh, you can hop in here. I'll grab your door for you. You can throw your stuff in. And uh, oh, okay. Kevin Cassiano super chatted five dollars. Uh, person shrugging. I appreciate you guys like live streaming. I'll, uh, I'll like refer. I'll bring anybody. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah enjoy I, it, I man. I appreciate you putting me in at an early time. You're the only person that, uh, like, I was going like two weeks out. Like, everybody. Was, <laughs> so I was like, hey. Glad to hear it. Yeah, glad we could make it happen, man. So enjoy it. Okay, see ya. Yeah. Can you guys stop? <laughs> We're gonna have to like take away privileges. Do you see? It's legitimately getting foggy now. But he's gonna take it from here. Jose seventy eight so. Rios super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Oh no, Smiley he's stealing the face. car. 
I didn't even get a picture. But I like that it's just straight out from here. Because if you have to back it out, it always confuses people a little bit. Because you don't swing it earlier enough, and then you're, you're going to go hit the boxes over there or something. Oh, it's cold. from Fast and Furious. <laughs> yes, yes it was. <laughs> he was gonna Tokyo drift out of here. <laughs> Those things, you guys make me laugh a lot. It's good times. You guys are still trying to do it. Here's five because I feel bad now. <laughs> Sean Gavin super chatted five dollars. Yeah, he is five dollars cause I feel bad now. Upside down face, smiley face. Actually, yeah, he's had in it and then the fog went off, so it was probably pretty cool. Hang on one second, guys. Oh, I just want to say hello really quick because I'm not showing, I'm not showing you on screen. I'm just wanting to say hello because we just did that. So. Okay, so. Okay, so I should probably hop off the screen in a moment. Okay, I got a little bit. I got to call in and check from home. Uh, make sure everything's going okay, because uh, cause our, uh, our son, I guess he's starting to throw little, little tantrums. Is the sound choppy for anybody else? Oh, I hope not. This is my good microphone, too. So, let me check. Um... Yeah, hopefully not. If not, I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe it's when I'm walking away or something. I don't know. But, yeah, so that was fun. I always like when it goes well like that. He, was, uh, he wasn't aware of the channel beforehand and then found it, like, because I mentioned it beforehand. So, like, it's one of those things where if you don't know about it ahead of time, you think you're just going to a regular tint shop. And then all of a sudden, like, you get here, and then it's just like, whoa, wait, what? What is going on here? Oh, that's interesting, different, cool, hopefully. So that's fun. He was pretty stoked about it and very happy with the way his car turned out and everything. So I'd love to bring people back here more for like a last impression or something like that. But <laughs> thank you. We got a bunch of Super Chats to, to shout out too. But most of it was trying to gas my customers, so like I have little sympathy for that. And uh, and that, that's always fun too. So it was a good time. So mixing those two worlds together when they don't exactly, that's what's tricky. To super shattered five dollars. What's there to do my while people wait tracky. for their ride? <laughs> How do we even KCC? Pista. With the five, thank you. What's there to do while people wait for the ride? We can run up front real quick. I can show you the showroom again. Um, not a ton, but most people, they have like their phone. So if they need Wi-Fi, like they can hop on Wi-Fi. That's totally fine. But I'll show you. I do have a, a Keurig setup. We'll just run up front real quick and we can, we can go over the showroom since it's been a minute here and I haven't. I haven't shut this off. So, still need to clean up 
a bunch of stuff back there, but when you walk up front, um, it looks it looks a heck of a lot better. So I put a TV up here, and I'll comment on that. Ooh, you see how they do that? Um, so I got, we got a, why isn't it on? Why isn't it on? I turned on the Christmas tree. This is, this is the coolest Christmas accessory y'all are ever going to see. Look at that. It's a snowing Christmas tree, y'all. How fancy is that? So it feels all homey and nice when you walk in. Um, I hung up a big TV and I have a, I, I'm going to put on my live streams as I'm tinting. I just forgot to do that <laughs> as I'm getting gassed. Aw, that's a super nice super chat. Super nice super chat. So I do have one little game. I found this thing. I thought it was funny. We'll let that super chat play. Though. But Kevin Cassiano super chatted five dollars. Kevin your channel about a week ago, and now I am totally addicted. <laughs> Kevin with a five. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's nice to actually have a worthwhile channel that people like. That's super cool. Thank you. So this is uh, like a little golf pinball game. I saw this while we were walking around uh, shopping, so I decided to pick something up for the front. Uh, it's silly and maybe looked fun, so I, so I got that. We have the display boards up there. And the big TV, I actually have to get a remote for it, um, but the, the downside of having that TV there, I didn't realize till after the fact, is the sound um, will bleed over into where I'm streaming. So if they're streaming like TV shows or music or anything like that, that's where it would be like, ah. Eh. So I think I'm just going to put my live streams while I'm streaming up on the TV. And then I have the, uh, the Keurig here. So if they want coffee or something like that, other than that, most people like they come in with their phones or like a laptop or something. He came in, he had to wait, uh, the whole time, but he brought in his laptop, hopped on Wi-Fi, and he was doing he said homework or something while he was uh, while he was waiting. So makes it a little bit more cozy, comfortable, just to have some of those things. Canon. But Kevin, thank you so much for the five. I appreciate that. Redid my website this morning, including the tint was quote feature. Let's get it. That's awesome. I forgot your business name. <laughs> Creative Auto Salon. Um, but that's cool. Try to put your lead form on the first page if it's showing up in very small and mobile. Yeah, having it actually on the front page was something I ignored. Really, what's crazy is like, you might think that it looks messy and you need to like organize certain pages for everything. Sometimes just literally people just hop on a page and they'll just scroll down the entire thing. So leaving all the most important stuff up top and just like calls to action and then more info and then more like calls to action like as you're just going down a page. Um, it's one reason my like my Shopify store is kind of designed the way it is too. Um, all, like most of the items are just all scrolling down the front page because like actually going out of your way to like find stuff is, is sometimes not all that great. So just leaving everything there and, and putting it multiple times is not a bad thing. So that's super cool. But that was fun. We had a good time. You guys gassed out my, uh, my shop with uh, quick dispersal fog, which definitely doesn't hang around at all, right? Um, I know I got some super chats to shout out here, but if I think of some other stuff to leave up front for like customers to be interesting, I think the main thing is just like as make it as like homey as you can, just like you know, because there's so much space there. So just having like a big living room for them to sit in and like, yeah, it just makes it comfortable. Put a fish tank in your waiting room. I have a really, I have like a small 16 gallon one at home. Um, we, we might have to move that here. So we might actually have a fish, fish tank before we know it. 
Hopefully that'll be okay when I shut the heat off and leave. But yeah, fish tanks are super cool. But the showroom is really like when you walk in, then you kind of feel comfortable. So like, I mean, most people are gonna be on their phones. Most people are gonna be like watching YouTube or, or, or browsing whatever. So just having the ability for them to like hop on Wi-Fi, have some phone chargers, um, and just like feel as cozy as they can while they're waiting makes it significantly better than sitting on like a hard chair and then, you know, just uncomfortable. All right, we're gonna shout out some supers because there's a whole bunch of them today, boy. Thank you. I, I guess we just gotta bring more people back. <laughs> so big shout outs to, uh, to Kevin, uh, KCC, Sean, Jose, Kevin, Jose, Jose was just all smiles trying to gas out my customer. Kevin with a five just because. And then Jose, David, uh, Alligator, Kevin, Alligator, uh, JM11, Versatility, Ken, David, Daniel, Daniel, DC, Dean, Daniel, Ken, Ken with the first one for the coffee. Cheers, bud. Thank you guys so much for all the support today. I really appreciate it. It's always fun when we can have fun with Super Chats, right? So I have some more ideas for them, um, but I don't have anything that I've been actively working on right now. I just have the ability to do, like, chroma keys whenever. Mm. Holy crap. D3. D3 kills easy super shattered twenty dollars. You ready for Christmas? I am. Thank you so much for the twenty. Actually, we did a ton of our Christmas shopping like way early, and it was really chill. And we like normally it's getting to like the last week, and then we're like scrambling for some stuff. Cause I have uh, I have a bunch of family to buy stuff for, and uh, and then we go to my dad's and have like just a big old Christmas morning, so it's really nice. And we got most of our shopping, and then my wife just wrapped it all, um, and we had it there over on like the fifth. So uh, it, it makes everything a little bit more relaxing when you kind of have it out of the way, and then you can just like enjoy the holidays. So yes, we are very ready. We've had our Christmas tree up since September. <laughs> or October, early October, I think. Or put a karaoke thing. No, we're not going to do a karaoke thing in the waiting room. <laughs> if I ever wanted to try and be completely blocked off of YouTube, we would do like top 100 music right on stream, but that would be... <laughs> Just get people yelling up front. What did you ask for Christmas? I never know exactly what to ask, but I actually do have like a list of stuff. Small list. It's mostly stuff for like the shop for like streaming and whatnot. Because a lot of times it's, it's like when there's something that I need, it's for the business and then I, just, then I just go out and buy it. So what I'm trying to do is actually optimize videos a lot, like just making them. So anything that is an extra pain. So something that's really simple is like I have this So this is my main, we're gonna skateboard on a heat gun. This is my main uh, camera that I'll use for my videos and there's bigger cameras, there's better cameras. Dude, the G7X, it looks really good and it's very compact and it's got a mic jack so everything's really simple on it. But when I put it on a tripod and then there's this mount here, um, the battery door gets blocked and this battery only lasts really like an hour and a half or so. It's not that long. So between like leaving it on and stuff like that, it gets blocked. So they have this little cage that like moves the little mount a little farther over and stuff. So then you have quick access to just swap out a battery, um, change out the SD card or whatever you need to do. Just little things like that would actually make a big difference in just getting a video put together. Because by the time you like figure out the shot, right? And just like you get your car pulled in, you kind of figure out what you're going to do. You scramble to grab all your tools and stuff for like tinning a door and like, okay, I guess I'll put that here. Then the battery dies and it's just like, it's just, then it eats up another 15 minutes trying to swap everything out and, and do it all again. 
I'll have to call you one day, need some help, I'll message you on Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem, man. Did you, did you call me the other day? Was that you? Because there was a call I had in the middle of the stream, and I meant to get back, and then all of a sudden, like, that's how, that's how all this goes. I just get sidetracked, and there's too many things to do. So while it seems like I'm sitting here and not doing anything, and I have all the time in the world, I'm just putting other stuff off right now. So I only had a handful of minutes before I have to, I have to hop off and, uh, and then close up and run home. So I suppose... <laughs> I just noticed that I should swift the floor. How about that? How about we'll do that real quick? Oh, that wasn't me that called? Okay. Then I feel bad. I got to get back to somebody, I guess. All right. Uh, where is that? I got to find where that is. Real quick. <laughs> Be productive. I can't sit and just like hang out. I gotta like do stuff. So where is that? We'll, we'll have to have just a general shop cleaning stream. How do I misplace? Hang on. Cannon. One sec. GoPro. Okay. We're gonna swift the floor real quick <laughs> because I actually like need to do some of this stuff. So what better time? Actually, we'll probably want to start here and move our way back. We'll do this. We'll clean up really quick, and then we'll uh, we'll cut out for today. But all this extra little stuff, like I'll sit. Ooh, that's no good. I'll put together, um, or like I'll have these things sitting around in the background that I have to do. And then I will sit at the computer after I stream for a minute. And then next thing I know, I just have to take off. And then so none of this stuff ends up getting done. That's why that like starts to look all dirty in the corner is because I actually have to make time to come in and do it ahead of everything else. So this is my nice, nice floor that I care very much about. So we're gonna make sure this all is at least mostly swept out. But you know what? I don't have a monitor here. Well, I do. I can't put chat up there, can I? Because that's like a full YouTube screen. I suppose I could try and read them as they pop up on there, though. I don't know. How's that gonna work? You make a good housewife? Thank you. Hey, I contribute. I shot you a Facebook message, had a question. Um, can you ask it right now? I did a back window yesterday. Forgot to change my carbon blade to stainless steel. You should put some sound deadening foam. <sighs> There's no good, see the problem is also the ceiling. So I can't, there's nothing that I can do here that's really practical that I, that I really wanna do either. So if I have like sound coming off of the TV, it's bleeding through not only the wall, but it's also going through the ceiling cause there's nothing above it. It's just ceiling tiles, so. You know, it is what it is. We'll just sweep this into the shop. This rug here is to cover up my, my horrible cuts. More of a personal question, no rush. See, that's the thing, I don't know if I'd get to it. <laughs> Bring a PS5 to the waiting room. 
Somebody's gonna steal a controller. No, I'm kidding. I don't know, because... There's those things that would be, like, genuinely fun to do, but most of them are, like, they sound fun, but it's, like, you would do it at home on your own account. I don't know if you would necessarily do it here. Just going through and cleaning off footprints right now. Okay. Well, that's a little bit better right now. It looks cleaner. Now we can walk all over it again. But all that stuff, like I gotta go through, I gotta clean all that stuff back there. I gotta organize the shelves on the back. We still got sawdust from like when I was cutting the floor and whatnot. Cannon. So all this stuff, like it starts to get pushed off because there's so many other things to do. Um, but yeah, if you like, yeah, answering extra questions outside, like through through direct messages and stuff like that. The only reason it gets really difficult is like a lot of the times it's my personal Facebook, which overlaps into family. And what I don't like about it too is sometimes it's like a quick response back, and the next thing I know, it's like it's a message after message after message after message <laughs> and then that takes up my messenger at that point so uh, it's just it's a little bit a little bit tough to get back to everything just because of the scale of it all so it's not just like a couple of people it's like a lot of people off of the channel will will try and message me off of Facebook or something and I just I wish I had time to get to it all but I just don't me sitting there typing takes too long I have an idea though, I talked about it a little bit before, but so this is really like the best time, like while I'm streaming, it's like you can pretty much ask me whatever, but you should bring a Pac-Man arcade. It's not a bad idea. Getting one of those like fun, quick arcades that you can kind of sta stand at and play, that would legitimately be a cool thing. VR window tint. <laughs> VR would be a little bit too much. But, see, because what I'd rather do is, like, see it on here and then actually, like, respond to it or whatever. Ta -ta. But, anyways. Alrighty. Well, we shouted out a bunch of super dupers, and uh, we're pretty much all set here. So I'm going to sign off. This is going to be a big thank you to everybody that super chatted and the fog machines didn't go off. <laughs> Even though there was a lot of that. Thank you guys very much for today. It was a lot of fun. Everything went well, and I uh, hope you learned something. So... I'm, uh, I'm going to finish locking up here, and that is going to be the rest of my day. So, y'all have a good one, and, uh, and what? We'll be back. We'll be back with something, I think, Tuesday. Monday, I'm setting aside for a personal day. So, I think Tuesday, we will be back with something. So, y'all have a good one. Peace. Oh, okay. Real quick, right before I click the end, D3 wants to get the uh, GoPro set up. Dude, I've helped a handful of people too with that. Um, like Haas, you've seen on Facebook, I'm sure. Haas, uh, Kevin Rogers, like, um, and, and Window Tint Pro. And it's starting to, to scale a little bit as far as like the people that, that want to know what's going on. So I do have a video, short video of like what's there. The technical side can eat up a lot of time, so that gets a little tricky. So I'll send you the video, and then you can kind of like 
figure out some of the stuff, just like look into the different things. I'll try and get to some questions when I can, but there is there really is like a lot to know, and I can't be I like I'm sure you know this, but I can't be tech support for all of it. But I can I can help with some stuff because it, it's like 500 little things to make this all work right. Um, but when it does, it's like essentially what we have here is the GoPro connected to a wireless HDMI transmitter with uh, a battery on top to power the GoPro, and then one of the batteries on the back of here to power this thing. So that's essentially what it is. And then wirelessly streams to a receiver, and then that plugs into a capture card on the PC. So like that's, you get that part going, you're off to the races. But yeah, I'm gonna take off here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all have a good one. Bye.